It is a windy afternoon at Hopkinton High School as we get you set for Hopkinton Hillers softball. And this will be their first home game of the season. They're scheduled to take on Natick on Tuesday, but that game has been moved to Friday. That game actually got moved twice after rainy conditions flooded up the field. Tom Nappy on the call, Bob Hamilton on camera. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM, the first game of the 2015 season. And today they welcome in the Milford Scarlet Hawks out of the Hockamock. Milford two and four and one on the season, two and one in the Hockamock. And the Hillers are off to a good start. They're three and zero oh overall on the season. Let's take a look at the field for the Hopkinton Hillers. Bree Miraboli getting the start on the mound as the first batter steps up to the plate. Sydney Pounds for the Scarlet Hawks. First pitch in there for a strike. And surrounding Miraboli got Molly Bennett over at second base. Lindsey Whittles over in left field. Kayla Kelly is the catcher. Kayla Sullivan in right field. The wind up and the pitch up high, one and one. At shortstop, Kate Wellzell. Third base, Nicole Komu. And first base, Jenna Bogan. Uh, Bream Rabley on the mound, as we mentioned, and Renee Cooprider in center field. The windup and the pitch, and that is up high for a ball. Two and one on Sydney Pounds. In just a moment, we'll give you the Milford Scarlet Hawks batting order as Mirabile on the mound as the expected starter, Juliet Hume, inactive for the first few games of the season. That pitch down low, three and one. For Milford, Sydney Pounds leading off right now. She's the center fielder. Emily Pierre Gustavo, the second baseman, batting second. Ali Pierre Gustavo, the first baseman, batting third. Taylor Lebrun, the catcher, batting cleanup as Pounds draws the walk. Kate DeCapua, the third baseman, batting fifth. Jill Powers batting sixth, playing short. Maggie Farrell playing right field, batting seventh. Megan Jakes, the designated player, batting eighth. And Jenny Levine, batting ninth, playing left field. As stepping to the plate is Emily Pierre Gustavo. And there's a strike to start it off. 0 oh and 1. Rabley has pitched pretty well in the first three games of the season. First three games of the season for the Hillers. All wins as that pitch hit into foul territory into the Hopkinton dugout area. That'll make it an 0 oh and 2 count. In the first game of the season, Hopkinton took down Medfield back on April 11th. 9 to 5. Then on April 15th, they beat Medway at Medway High School, 13 to nothing. And then they shut out Westwood on the 16th, 12 to nothing. That was the first home game back on the 16th. That was a game that was moved up because of rainy conditions expected that Friday. And there's a swinging strike for the first out of the inning. One away, that'll bring up Ali Pierre Gustavo, the first baseman for the Scarlet Hawks. The Milford Scarlet Hawks led by head coach Steve DeVito. Coach DeVito well known around the area as he is also the Milford Legion baseball head coach as that pitch fouled away, 0 oh and 1. And we had coverage of the Milford Legion baseball run to the regionals on HCAM last summer. Certainly a fun time to be a Milford Legion baseball fan. They were just one win away from heading to the World Series. The wind up and the pitch, uh, attempted steal, and the throw from Kelly will not be in time, and Sydney Pounds steals second base. The pitch was a ball, a one and one count. So runner in scoring position for the Scarlet Hawks with one out. As Mirabile awaits the sign, the wind up and the pitch, a swinging strike. Leading off of second is Pounds. Mirabile steps back in the circle, awaits the sign. Line up and the pitch, and that is just outside as Pounds threatens towards third. And Kelly looks down the lane and gets her back to the bag. The wind up and the pitch, and that's fouled away. Two and two. Taylor LeBrun due up on deck, the catcher for the Scarlet Hawks. Mirabile awaiting the sign. Wind up and the pitch, that's fouled away. 
Good battle here between Brie Mirabili and Ali Pierre Gustavo. Mirabili, so far this season, has pitched 14 innings, given up seven hits, four runs, none of them earned, and has 20 strikeouts. Line up and the pitch, a swinging strike, and that'll be the second out of the inning. Two straight strikeouts for Mirabili, and that'll bring up Taylor Lebrun. Lebrun steps in the box. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. The Scarlet Hawks squad, a lot of good offensive players, a great pitcher in Ali Atherton. This should be quite the battle today here at the Hopkinton Softball Diamond. The line up and the pitch, that's fouled away. Oh and two. Ravelli awaits the sign, delivers down the first baseline and in foul territory out of the reach of Jenna Bogan. That was just out of the reach of Bogan. Ravelli awaits the sign. The lineup and the pitch, just a little bit high. This Hopkinton softball team got a little bit of a blow earlier this year as their expected starter ended up going to another school, Alyssa Cargill, as that pitch fouled away. But Juliet Hume and Bree Mirabili expected to get the job done on the mound, and so far it's been a nice start for the Hillers. And early on, they're one of the top teams in the TVL. Line up and the pitch, and this is right up the middle, played by the second baseman. Throw to first in time for the four to three ground out, and we will head to the bottom of the first. It is a scoreless game with the Hopkinton Hillers coming up to bat next. Set to enter the bottom of the first. It's Hopkinton Hillers softball on H Cam. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this New Eng historic New England town since 1954. They're a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hopkinton Drug is located at 52 Main Street. As the Hiller is set to come up to bat, Molly Bennett steps in the box and awaits the pitch from Allie Atherton. Milford. Got a runner aboard in the first inning, but no runs came out of it as the first pitch up high. Let's take a look at the Hillers batting order. Molly Bennett, the second baseman, leading off. Lindsey Whittles, the left fielder, batting second. Kayla Kelly, the catcher, batting third, hitting cleanup, playing right field, is Kayla Sullivan. Kate Wellzell, batting fifth, playing shortstop, wind up in the pitch down low. Nicole Como, playing third base, and batting six, Jenna Bogan batting seven, playing first base, Bree Mirabili the pitcher batting eighth, and Renee Cooprider batting ninth and playing center field. As Bennett steps back in. Oh, wind up and the pitch, up high, and that'll turn away Bennett, Atherton a little wild to start. So far on the season, Molly Bennett, the sophomore, has played in three games a 500 batting average, four for eight. Wind up and the pitch, and that is off of Bennett. And she will get a free pass over to first base after being hit by the pitch. It'll bring up Lindsey Whittles, the left fielder today. Whittles a 545 hitter so far. Six for 11, has scored four runs, driven in seven. A lot of good offensive players on this Hopkinton Hillers squad. As Atherton steps back in and delivers some movement on that pitch, but it ends up high, one and oh. Atherton, very good pitcher for Milford, uh, who is expected to be an elite team in the Hockamock. And so far they have played that way. Two and oh, that pitch outside. On, 
Molly Bennett on the first base bag for the Hillers after being hit by a pitch to start off the inning. There's that pitch down low, three and O. Oh. The battery for Milford is Taylor LeBron and Allie Atherton. As Atherton delivers. And that is going to be ball four, four straight balls. And that'll give Whittles the free pass to second base. Bennett will move up to first and T Taylor LeBron is going to come out and have some words with Allie Atherton. Gives us a chance to take a look at the Milford Diamond. Let's take a look at the outfield. Sydney Pounds in center field. Maggie Farrell over in right field. Jenny Levine is the left fielder. The infield, Ali Pierre Gustavo at first. Emily Pierre Gustavo at second. Jill Powers at short. Kate Capua over at third. Designated player, Megan Jakes. As Atherton is set to deliver to Kayla Kelly, the catcher. The lineup and the pitch, and that is up high, 1-0. And now Coach DeVito going to come out and talk to Allie Atherton, try to settle her down a little bit. As Lizzie Kelly, the catcher at the plate. Full name Elizabeth, but goes by Lizzie, the senior. Coach DeVito will head back out to the dugout area. Certainly not uh, typical of Atherton to start games like this. Usually she has her pitches very well under control. But some struggles early on. And the Hillers going to try to take advantage of it here. As Kelly awaits the pitch, the lineup and the pitch is in there for a strike, one and one. Kayla Sullivan due up on deck for Hopkinton. Line up and the pitch, just inside, two and one. Atherton delivers on the ground, third base side, and that is going to be foul. As Kelly will step out, take some practice swings. This is a trick to Allie Atherton. Take advantage while she's a little bit wild as that pitch up high, three and two. Because once she gets going, she gets going. And a strong wind here this afternoon. It's technically around 50 degrees out, but it feels about 30 as this is hit in the air foul territory. I might be exaggerating a little. Maybe it feels like 37, 38. It's certainly a chill in the air here in the second home game for the Hopkinton Hillers, the first that we've had on HCAM so far this season. As Atherton delivers, and this is in the air to left field, and that will drop into the glove of the left fielder, but push the runners up. And there will be two runners now in scoring position as Levine was there to make the catch, but a good sacrifice for Kelly. And that will bring up Kayla Sullivan with runners on second and third. Atherton throws over to second. I think she just wanted to loosen up her arm there. And now the umpire coming over. There's going to be a quick discussion on the mound between the Milford infielders. Here we go, Here we go. 
as Sullivan is set for the pitch. And now the umpire coming out, warning the coaches to be in the dugout. I guess he doesn't want them too far on the field. And he was talking to Coach Baker earlier as Baker was kind of standing out. It was in the grassy area. But the umpire just wants them off the field totally and into the dugout area. So that's the discussion right now. And typically the coaches are allowed to stand in the grassy area, but I guess some umpires don't like it. Zatherton is set to deliver. Wind up and the pitch is inside. Two runners on with one out for Hopkinton. Line up and the pitch, and that is on the ground and will get through. A one run will score, and Whittles will be held up at third, but it's a one to nothing Hopkinton Hillers lead off a Kayla Sullivan RBI single. So the first run across for Hopkinton, that'll bring up Kate Wellzell. Well, Zell, a multi-sport athlete. And she is going to attempt the bunt. The first pitch in there for a strike as she pulls back. So runners on the corners with one out for Hopkinton. Already one run across. Whittles over at third, Sullivan at first. Well, Zell, a 455 hitter so far. This is on the ground, third base side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw over to first, and the throw will be in time. That was a good throw across the diamond by DeCapua. So that'll be the second out, a five to three ground out there and Whittles stayed over at third. Nice job by DeCapua. She checked the third base bag to make sure Whittles didn't go. Threw across the diamond perfectly to get the second out. As Como comes up to the plate, first pitch up high. Two runners in scoring position. Sullivan did move up to second on the force play. Atherton delivers. And this is in the air towards center field and that will drop into the glove of Pounds. A nice underhand catch by Pounds for the third out of the inning. Saves any further damage. But we will head into the top of the second. The Hopkinton Hillers leading the Milford Scarlet Hawks one to nothing. This is Hopkinton softball on H camp. Top half of the second inning. Due up for Milford, Kate DeCapua, Jill Powers, and Maggie Farrell. DeCapua, the third baseman, will step in to face Bree Mirabile, who pitched a scoreless first inning. The runner did reach. Sydney Pounds. Reached first on the walk. The wind up and the pitch is up high, and that'll back to Capua off the plate. And this is a good pitching matchup here between Mirabile and Atherton. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Capua tried to hold up the swing. Not sure if she did, but I think it was a strike either way. Prima Rabelli, only a junior. She could very well be the starter on this team next year. This is on the ground, third base side. Bobbled over at third base. Throw to first in time. A 5-3 to three ground out to get to Capua. Nice job by Como. Even with the bobble, stayed with it. Picked it up. Beautiful throw across the diamond over to Bogan. And you have one out in the inning, and that'll bring up Jill Powers. Power steps in, awaits the pitch, and that is in there for a strike. Grabs the lower corner. Rabbley awaits the sign. And that is low, one and one. Wind up and the pitch. Just inside, two and one. Oh, 
Wind up in the pitch. That's hit into center field, deep into center field. That drops in for a hit around first base, heading over to second. And that is going to be a stand up double for Jill Powers. Belted that pitch past the reach of Coop Rider. And Milford has a runner in scoring position with one out for Maggie Farrell. Rabbley awaits the side. That's just up high. That pitch down low, 2-0. and oh, Nice recovery by Kelly. Preventing Powers from getting over to third as she scooped up the wild pitch. And there's a good strike as that grabs the outside corner on the lefty. To the set, delivers. And there's another strike. Some good movement on these pitches from Mirabli. That pitch there had a great drop. Mirabli delivers. Swinging strike. Second out of the inning. Had Farrell fool, fooled there. She thought that pitch was going to drop like the other two, but that time it didn't. And a swinging strikeout. That is the third strikeout of the game for Mirabili as Jake steps in. That pitch down low as Powers threatens towards third. Wind up and the pitch is up high. Two and oh. And a pretty good turnout for an early afternoon game here on school vacation at the Hillers Diamond. Is that pitch in there for a strike? Got a lot of Milford fans here too. Certainly a close enough drive to come down. Rabbley delivers. In there for a strike, two and two. That grabbed the inner corner. Wind up and the pitch is hit in the air and it's caught by the second baseman. Nice job by Bennett jumping up to make the catch on the liner for the third out of the inning. And we will head to the bottom of the second. Hopkinton off to a one to nothing lead. And we are set to enter the bottom half of the second inning as Jenna Bogan steps in to face Allie Atherton, also do up Bream Rabbley and Renee Cooprider for the Hopkinton Hillers. It's a one to nothing Hopkinton lead. Atherton hoping for a better result this inning. She had to face six batters in the first inning. Is that pitch just outside, a one and zero oh count. Atherton set to deliver, and this is a little blooper in the air, foul territory, third base side, no one will get to it. <laughs> Jenna Bogan off to a 400 start off at the plate, two for five, has driven in two runs. As this is on the ground right up the middle, throw to first, easy out. A one, two, three ground out, start things off. Bree Mirabli will come up. Bree Mirabli 0 for 2 at the plate so far. But has not had a lot of opportunities, has only had two at bats total. As that pitch fouled away. Most games she's pitched, she was the tenth, the tenth man on the lineup, so therefore she doesn't bat, as Hopkinton had the designated player. Swinging strike, 0-2. But 
Mirabile will certainly have her time at the plate this season, especially once Juliet Hume gets back. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away. Count remains 0 and 2. And if both these pitchers can get keep it going, in the case of Bremer Mirabile and Allie Atherton gets it going, this could be a fairly low scoring game. Two very good pitchers in this game today. As this is a little bloop shot foul territory third base side and that's out of the reach of DeCapua. Count remains 0 and 2. Wind up and the pitch. That's up high. Hopkinton Hillers last year had a pretty good playoff run. They finished 17 and 3 overall. Wind up and the pitch on the ground. Third base side picked up at third. Throw to first in time. DeCapua showing off her skills from the third base side once again for the second out of the inning. And she is a consistent over there at that third base bag, to say the least. And now at the plate is Renee Cooprider. And there's a strike. Delivered on the outer edge of the plate. Atherton to the set, delivers. Swinging strike, one and two. Coop Ryder so far at a 429 mark on the season. Three for seven, has scored six runs, driven in two, also has a home run. There's a strike and that'll end the inning as At Atherton able to get the strikeout on Coop Ryder. And we will head to the top of the third. It's one to nothing. Hopkinton here at Hopkinton High School. Milford Scarlet Hawks, Hopkinton Hillers softball as we enter the third inning of play. Due up for Milford is Jenny Levine, Sydney Pounds, and Emily Pierre Gustavo to face Bremer Abilie and the bunt attempt down the third baseline. Throw to first in time. Nice job by Como. And that is something that Coach Baker and squad works on is fielding those bunt attempts. And they do a very good job at it as Sydney Pounds do up. She reached her last time up in the first. The lineup and the pitch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Milford 4 and 1 in the Davenport division of the Hockamock. They're leading the way right now. Foxborough is two and two, Oliver Ames two and three. And they're the second and third team as that pitch is in there for a strike. Stoughton is actually three and two. And Sharon and Canton have yet to win. Sharon 0 and three, Canton 0 and six. So Milford so far in good shape over in the Hockamock as that pitch fouled towards the stands. Count remains 0 and two. as Mirabile awaits the sign. And that's hit in the air, foul territory towards the Hopkinton dugout area. Count remains 0-2. Good battle here by Pounds and Mirabile, and it was a good battle her first time up as well. Milford has a hit in both innings so far in this game. Pounds had a hit to start off the game as that's fouled away into the Hopkinton dugout area. You see how Pounds crunches down, leans back and awaits the pitch and it's one and two. 
And she's not really a power hitter, but she's one of those hitters that'll poke it through a gap and speed her way around the base paths. As this is hit in the air towards center field, and it will be caught by Cooprider. That's the second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Emily Pierre Gustavo. Rabley gets the sign and delivers down low. Lineup and the pitch fouled away. And when you see Mirabili have innings like this, and she's already pitched in three games so far, has had a lot of success. Hopkinton undefeated so far on the season. And doing it against this Milford lineup really shows that she is certainly starter material. There's a swinging strike, one and two. And uh, Hopkinton will certainly have a great pitcher next year if they need it. That pitch is inside. I'm sure Mirabli will be at the top of the list to be the main starter next year for Hopkinton. That's down the third baseline towards the Milford dugout and fouled away. And that's a shot why, you, and that's a shot that makes you see why the umpires want everyone to be behind that fence area. As this is a little bloop shot in fair territory and will roll foul. On, Landed right on the line, rolled into foul territory. Count remains two and two as the sun starts to peek out for the first time here this afternoon. Certainly a great sight to see. Gives us a little heat down here before it was pretty windy and cold. But the sun brought some instant warmth as that's followed away into the woods. Two and two as Pierre Gustavo continues to battle. That pitch just inside. Three and two on Emily Pierre Gustavo. Mirabli for the one, two, three inning, and she won't get it. She walks Pierre Gustavo. That'll bring up Ali Pierre Gustavo. She struck out her last time up. Rabley awaits the sign and delivers, and that is in there for a strike. You're watching Hopkinton Hiller's softball on H Camp. Bob Hamilton on camera, Tom Nappy on the call. And there's strike two. It is our first H Camp softball broadcast of the year, and hopefully many more to come. The lineup and the pitch. That is. Hit in the air towards left field and will be caught by Whittles for the third out of the inning. So we will head to the bottom half of the third. Hopkinton leading Milford one to nothing. Set to enter the bottom half of the third. Top of the Hopkinton order coming up. Molly Bennett, Lindsay Whittles, and Lizzie Kelly do up for the Hillers who lead the Milford Scarlet Hawks one to nothing. Is Allie Atherton back out for another inning of work? And unfortunately, the sun has gone away and we are back to cloudy skies and lots of wind. As that's a swinging strike, oh and one. It was nice while it lasted though. And hopefully we'll see a, a lot of sun this year, especially after the brutal winter, which actually pushed back the start of the high school spring season by about two weeks. This is hit in the air towards center field, ranging back to make the catch is Pounds, and a nice job by Pounds as she had a reach for that one, and there is one away in the bottom of the third. That'll bring up Lindsay Whittles, who walked her last time up. Yeah. 
And I have a feeling this is going to be a pitcher's battle between Mirabile and Atherton. And there's a strike. I don't know how many offensive opportunities you'll get off these two pitchers. Atherton started off a little bit shaky, but has since warmed up and is pitching nicely. And that's a liner in a center field. That will be a base hit for Whittles. And now Lizzie Kelly will come up to the plate. Got a nice piece of that one. Kelly had a sacrifice fly out to push Bennett up to third and Whittles up to second which led to a Kayla Sullivan RBI single for the only run of the game. And that was in the first inning as that pitches a ball. Runner on first, one out for the Hillers. Atherton set to deliver, and there's a strike. One and one. To the set, and this is on the ground, gets through the gap between second and third, and that is a single for Lizzie Kelly. And Kayla Sullivan will come up as the Hillers trying to get a little rally going. And that was Kelly's fourth hit of the season. She's now four for 13 overall. Line up and the pitch. And that is just a little bit high, one and oh. <laughs> On the ground, third base side, nice move. Picking up the ball and tagging the bag to Capua to get the force out. Kelly moves up to second, Sullivan on first after the fielder's choice. And that brings up Wellzell. Two outs in the inning. Upstairs, one and O. Oh. Atherton delivers. This is on the ground, picked up over at third, and the throw to first, another nice play by DeCapua to retire the side. And we will head to the top half of the fourth, Hopkinton leading Milford one to nothing. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit them at WebsterFirst.com. We are set to enter the top half of the fourth inning. Some good glove work by Kate DeCapua to help retire the Hopkinton Hillers in the bottom of the third. And that was after the Hillers had two straight hits from Wills and Kelly, but no harm done as Taylor LeBrun steps to the plate and takes a pitch up high. And she was just able to hold up that swing. Taylor LeBrun, Kate DeCapua, Jill Powers do up for Coach Steven DeVito's Milford Scarlet Hawks. That pitch down low. And of course, the leader for the Hopkinton Hillers softball team, head coach Dennis Baker Jr. He's done a Fantastic job with this team. This is in the air, high in the air, foul territory, third base side, and out of play. And also out of the reach of Como. Or excuse me, that was uh, Wellzell coming all the way over. Mirabli awaits the sign. Line up and the pitch. That's hit in the air foul. 
two and two. Wind up and the pitch on the ground. Full count. Rabley awaits the sign and delivers. Is hit third base side. That will get through the reach of Como into left field, and that is a single for LeBron. So a runner on to start things off for Milford in the fourth inning. And we are going to have a pinch runner here for the Scarlet Hawks. Coming in to pinch run is Kate Irwin for LeBron. And now Kate DeCapua to the plate. Milford getting the speed in there, trying to force a run across. They know they won't have too many opportunities against Moravli. Is that pitch down low? Throw down at first, and that'll get uh, they'll get Irwin back to the bag. Good throw down the line by Kelly. Moravli set to deliver, and this is a liner right over to short. Throw to first, and they get two. Nice job by Wellzell. Two away in the fourth. And they caught Irwin too far off the bag. She thought it was going to get through the gap, but thought too soon. And now Jill Powers at the plate. And there's a strike, 0 oh and 1. That's another great feature of this Hillers team. They have. Some great defenders across the diamond. That pitch inside. Wind up and the pitch. This is in the air towards left field, towards the fence, and that's gone! A home run! Jill Powers goes yard, and it's one to one. And she crushed that pitch. Just past Whittles over in left field, and got past the fence to tie this game up. And now Maggie Farrell will come up to the plate. You cannot underestimate this Milford lineup. A lot of great hitters in this lineup with a lot of power. The lineup and the pitch. And that is a strike. To the lefty. And this is in fair play, and Mirabli will make the catch, but I think it went off the catcher's glove, so they're going to rule it a foul ball. 0 oh and 2. The line up and the pitch. That's down low, 1 and 2. And that's some tough luck. You get that double play by Wellzell, thinking you're going to get out of the inning. And then a home run by Powers makes it a new game. Rabley to the set. That's down low. But Mirabli just has to shake it off. Don't get too overwhelmed. You're one strike away from getting out of the inning. Wind up and the pitch, and that is down low. And Farrell will get the free jog down the first base. We'll bring up Megan Jakes. Here 
Crabbly awaits the sign and delivers. There's a strike. Crabbly to the set, down low. A one and one count. Wind up and the pitch, that's fouled away. Jake's lined out her last time up in the second. Mirabli just trying to get out of this inning. Get the Hopkinton bats back up there. There's a little bloop shot in the air while Zell ranging over and she'll make the catch. A nice job by Will Zell ranging over, calling Bennett off to get the third and final out of the top half of the fourth, but not before. Jill Powers knocks it past the left field fence to tie the game up at one as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Hillers coming up. Set to enter the bottom of the fourth, Nicole Como, Jenna Bogan, and Bree Mirabili do up for the Hillers. It's a one-to-one -one game after Jill Powers went yard in the top of the fourth for the Scarlet Hawks to make it a brand new ball game. Como flew out her last time up in the first, and she is set to face Allie Atherton. The wind up and the pitch, and this is hit in the air towards center field, and ranging over to make the catch is Pounds for the first out of the inning. The wind giving that ball some motion, but a nice job by Sydney Pounds tracking it down. And Jenna Bogan will step in. She grounded out her last time up in the second. Line up and the pitch. And this is a liner into right field. That'll drop in and that will be a single for Bogan. That's Bogan's third hit of the season. She's now three for six. We'll bring up Bree Mirabili. Mirabili grounded out her last time up in the second. And there's a strike. Oh and one. Wind up and the pitch. On the ground, up the middle, played at short, throw to second for one, throw to first, not in time, but they get the lead runner. Nice job by Powers. A six to four force out. There's two away for Renee Cooprider. Line up and the pitch up high. And this is a little bloop shot, which will be a slow roller on the dirt. And it's picked up by Pierre Gustavo. A little flip to Alley, and that is good for the third out of the inning. And we will head to the top half of the fifth with the game knotted at one. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Cornerstone at Milford, a new senior community featuring apartment living with innovative programs, services, and transportation to help seniors stay independent. Conveniently located on Route 109 or 495. More at cornerstonemilford.com. And we are set for the top half of the fifth inning. A one-to-one -one game. Is stepping in, Jenny Levine as she will take the pitch, and that is in for a strike. Bree Mirabli out there for another inning of work. And so far, it's been a pretty good start for Bree as Levine gets that walking start and swings for strike two. Line up and the pitch. That is down low. To the set, swinging, strike three. One away, and that will bring up Sydney Pounds. Pounds got a base hit in the first. That 
That's up high, one and oh. Rabley to the set, delivers inside. Actually, I might have got the uh, inside part of the plate, so it's called a strike, one and one. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, two and one. Rabley delivers. And there's a strike. She likes to work that inside part of the plate, especially on the righties. And right now, her accuracy is on as that is hit into foul territory and out of play. A good amount of the, a few of the Hopkinton High School staff turning up to support the Hiller softball team, including Principal Evan Bishop in attendance. That pitch inside. Three and two on pounds. Rabley to the set, and this is driven into center field towards the fence, and that is off the top of the fence. And that is going to be in play. It is going to be a stand-up double for Pounds. That went right off the top bar. That was nearly out of the ballpark. And now Emily Pierre Gustavo will come up with a runner in scoring position as Baker is going to come out to the pitcher's circle, have a chat with Mirabli. And there has been some warm up action for the Lady Hillers, and uh, it looks like Mirabli is going to come out of the ball game. It was a nice job by Bree Mirabli, a good start, and this is a very tough Milford Scarlet Hawks lineup, but she did a nice job against it. So now we will have a relief pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers, who is going to try to keep this game tied at one. And we'll get you all the information on that relief pitcher in just a moment. Heather Hawley is the new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. Heather is a sophomore and she will take over for Bree Mirabli. Mirabli went four and a third, giving up one run on five hits. Still responsible for the Scarlet Hawks runner over at second, Sydney Pounds. Mirabli also had four strikeouts in her start today. As Emily Pierre Gustavo steps in to face Heather Holly. Holly set to deal, a bunt, a slow roll around the infield dirt, picked up and there will be no play. Kelly looked down the first base line, but it was just rolling too slow. She could not get to it in time. And a successful bunt by Pierre Gustavo. It also moves Sydney Pounds up to third base. And that will bring up Ali Pierre Gustavo. So the Scarlet Hawks have something brewing here in the fifth. Holly awaits the sign, and the infielders will play in on the corners. And this is hit in the air, foul territory, and that'll make the count 0-1. Heather Holly was warming up on and off throughout this game, so her arm was pretty much ready when she came out. This is a liner to left field, that drops in for a hit. One run is around a score. And the other runner coming from first, Emily Pierre Gustavo, will be held up at third on the RBI single by Ali Pierre Gustavo. Pounds came around to score the Scarlet Hawks' second run of the game. And now Taylor LeBrun will come up with one out and runners on the corners. Holly awaits the sign. 
Line up and the pitch down low. Kelly looked down the third baseline to get the runner back to the bag. So we'll see if this Hiller's offense can get something going to try to get back into this game. That pitch up high and taking off from first with the stolen base is Ali Pierre Gustavo. It's the second Milford steal of the afternoon. Holly set to deliver. And that is down the third baseline and it is going to be foul. Two and one. To the set. And this is ricocheted in the left field. That'll drop in for a hit. Another run is going to come around to score. A second run being waved around. A two RBI double for Taylor Lebrun. And Milford has opened this game up. And it is four to one. And that will bring up Kate to Capua. Now there's going to be a meeting of the infielders on the mound. Teammates giving Heather Holly a little encouragement. But this is a good experience for the sophomore. Facing this potent Milford lineup. Get some experience against some great hitters. And Heather Holly, she's certainly going to be a factor for Hopkinton in the next couple of years. Or for the next couple of years. It's to Capua, waits the pitch. On the ground, up the middle, played by the at shortstop, throw to first in time, and the runner from second, Taylor LeBron, will push up to third. Six to three for that out. That'll bring up Jill Powers. Holly delivers in there for a strike. Jill Powers having a nice day. Two for two, a double and a home run back in the fourth, which at the time tied up the game at one apiece. This is on the ground up the middle. Well, Zell plays it at short throw to first in time for the third out. A six to three ground out, but not before. The Milford Scarlet Hawks push three runs across to make it a four to one game. We will head to the bottom of the fifth. The Hopkinton offense needs to get something going. Bottom half of the fifth inning, the Hopkinton Hillers have the top of the order due up. Molly Bennett, Lindsey Whittles, and Lizzie Kelly. It is a four to one lead for the Milford Scarlet Hawks as three runs came through in the fifth. It all started off with a double from Sydney Pounds, followed by a single by Emily Pierre Gustavo. And Ali Pierre Gustavo drove in a run with an RBI single. And then a two RBI double by Taylor Lebrun, a swinging strike to start things off for Molly Bennett. Ali Atherton out there for another inning of work for the Scarlet Hawks. Atherton awaits the sign and deals. And this is down the first baseline foul. First base umpire trying to make a play on it. Went right through his legs. Oh and two, the count. Atherton deals. And this is in fair play. Bobble at second base, and she will flip it up for the out. Nice recovery by Pierre Gustavo. A little bobble there by Emily, and then the little flip to Allie just in time to get Bennett. And that'll bring up Lindsay Whittles. Whittles one for one with a walk, singled in the third. Atherton deals down low, but it 
It's going to get the strike call. Good movement on that pitch. The wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. And Atherton is throwing some great pitches in the last few innings. Some very good movement, and she is on. And that is fouled away, third base side. Oh, and two. Wind up and the pitch. Slow roller down the first baseline and foul. Wind up and the pitch. That is fouled away over into the woods area. Atherton set to deliver. That one's down low. Atherton awaits the sign. And deals. There's a strike. And that will be another strikeout for Atherton as she gets Whittles looking. That is her second strikeout of the afternoon. Here comes Lizzie Kelly. The line up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Atherton delivers up high. Two and O. Oh. Line up and the pitch. That one's down low. For those of you just tuning in, a four to one lead for Milford over Hopkinton. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Milford plated three runs in the top of the fifth. So they got a little rally going, four straight hits. Wind up and the pitch on the ground, played at short, throw to first, not a problem. His powers got it across to Pierre Gustavo for the one, two, three, bottom of the fifth. We will head to the top of the six. Milford leading Hopkinton four to one. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Angels Garden Center, located at 65 School Street, growing in Hopkinton since 1957, bedding, container plants, vegetables, culinary herbs, bark mulch, firewood, and more. Visit them online at angelsgardencenter.com. And we are set to enter the top half of the sixth inning. The Milford Scarlet Hawks coming up to the plate with a four to one lead as the wind continues to pick up here at Hopkinton High School. Heather Hawley out there for another inning of work as this pitch hit in the air towards right field and unable to get to it is Sullivan. That will be a double for F Maggie Farrell just out of the reach of Sullivan. Now coming up to the plate is Megan J Jakes, designated player. Holly delivers. There's a strike. So a leadoff double to start off the six for Milford. Holly set to deliver. 
And that one inside. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away. Holly deals on the ground up the middle. That'll get through, rolls into left field, and that will put runners on the corners. And now pushing up to second is Jakes, the throw to home plate to prevent Farrell from coming around. So Jakes gets the single but advances to second on the throw in. And now Farrell over at third. So two runners in scoring position, no outs. And Jenny Levine will come to the plate with an opportunity to do some damage. Heather Holly is likely going to be the pitcher from here on out, and Milford's going to have a pinch runner over at second base. Get you the information on that in just a moment. As soon as I see the number, I'll let you know who it is. The lineup and the pitch. Running start outside, 1-0. and oh. And the pinch runner is Shannon Cormier for the Scarlet Hawks. As Holly set to deliver. And that is hit in the air, fouled away. Behind home plate, one and one on Levine. Infield playing in. That pitch is outside, two and one. Holly delivers on the ground. That'll get through on the right side. And one run is around to score. Jake's held up over at third, but Maggie Farrell comes around to score to make it a five to one game, an RBI single for Levine. That will bring up Sydney Pounds. Still no outs in the inning for Milford. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one. And no matter what happens here, this is a great experience for a sophomore to be out there against this lineup. And that pitch was inside, pushing up to second is Levine. Holly to the set, delivers. Turns the hitter away, but it grabs the inside part of the plate for a strike. And that is a swinging strike. And that will be the first out of the inning as Pounds goes down. Emily Pierre-Gustavo coming up to the plate. She's one for two with a walk, scored a run in the fifth. That was in the three-run rally for Milford. Holly delivers in the air towards shallow left field, and it is dropped by Whittles, and one run is around to score. And you got to give her the error on that one. Pierre Gustavo reaches on the error. Jakes came around to score the sixth Milford run of the day. Levine pushes up to third. 
That just fell out of the glove there of Whittles. There's Ali Pierre Gustavo at the plate now. That's fouled away. That would have been a nice play by Whittles if she could have held on to that ball. She really had a range in to make that catch. And I'm sure the wind played a factor. Probably threw her off a little bit. Some strong winds here today. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. A six to one lead for Milford. Heather Holly hoping to stop this Milford rally. And this is crushed into left field, but foul. Line up and the pitch. That is hit into foul territory and will be caught. And that will be the third out of the inning. Milford plates a couple more runs. And we will head to the bottom of the sixth. It's a six to one Milford lead. Bottom of the sixth inning, Kayla Sullivan, Kate Welzell, Nicole Como do up for Hopkinton. It's a six to one lead for Milford. Wind up and the pitch. And this is driven into right field. That's off the fence. There's a base hit. And that is going to be a stand up double for Sullivan. And Hopkinton hoping to get something going offensively. Well, Zell will come up to the plate. Atherton delivers on the ground, foul. Third base side, 0 and 1. Wind up and the pitch, swinging strike. To the set, on the ground, third base side. Picked up at short, throw to first for one. And now they'll throw to third, and they will not be in time. So Kayla Sullivan pushes up to third. That ends up being a sacrifice for Wilzell. On the six to three, one out. Nicole Como will come up. That's fouled away. Oh, and one. Wide up and the pitch. That's fouled away. Oh, and two. Runner on third for Hopkinton, one out. That's low. Line up and the pitch upstairs. Two 
two and two. To the set, that's down low. Good recovery by LeBron and Sullivan will stay put. Line up and the pitch inside. I grabbed the inner part of the plate. That's strike three, two away. Jenna Bogan coming up. Atherton has certainly pitched a gem here today for Milford. Fouled away. Wind up and the pitch. Outside, one and one. Swinging strike. Atherton trying to retire the side. And that's fouled away. Wind up and the pitch. That's poked foul. Good battle here by Jenny Bogan and Allie Atherton. Swinging strike, and that will do it for the bottom half of the six. We'll head to the seventh inning. Milford leading Hopkinton six to one. Top half of the seventh inning. Kate DeCapua, Jill Powers, and Maggie Farrell do up for the Milford Scarlet Hawks. Heather Hawley out there for another inning of work. Ended up giving up two more runs in the sixth. A double by Maggie Farrell to start things off, then a single by Megan Jakes, and an RBI single by Jenny Levine. And then Emily Pierre Gustavo reached on an error, which allowed Jakes to score. And that made it a six to one game. Kate to Capua to the plate. On the ground, up the middle, played by Holly. She'll flip it to first, four one. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. We do have a pinch hitter at the plate, Maddie Bonvino for Milford. Line up in the pitch, and that is third base side in fair territory. That is a base hit for Bonvino, and she's going to round first and had a second. Slides in with the double. Some good speed around the base paths. So with one out, a runner in scoring position. And Maggie Farrell do up. On the ground and through the glove of Wellzell. And that will put runners at the corners. And I think you gotta give Wellzell the error on that one. It was a routine grounder. That'd be the second 
Hiller's error of the game. As Jakes will come up to the plate. Line up and the pitch. Little bloop shot, that'll land into center field. Just in front of the glove of Coop Ryder and a Milford run will score. And they did get Farrell heading to second. But Jakes with the RBI single, they got Farrell on the force out. Seven to one game as Jenny Levine comes up. Wind up and the pitch just outside. To the set delivers. And that one's outside. Two and O. Oh. There's a strike. Check in over at first. Back to the bag safely is Jake's. Holly set to deliver. And this is a slow roller right to Holly. She'll throw to first, and that will be the third and final out of the inning, another Milford run does score on an RBI single by Jakes. It's a 7-1 game as we head to the final stretch. Bottom of the seventh coming up next. Bottom of the seventh inning as Heather Holly will come up to the plate. Two up, Heather Holly, Renee Cooprider, and Molly Bennett for the Hopkinton Hillers. Allie Atherton going for the complete game. As Milford off to the 7-1 lead. And this has been a gem of a performance by Atherton as that pitch grabs the inside part of the plate. Wind up and the pitch. That's hit in the air, foul territory, and Atherton chases it down for the first out. Now coming up to the plate, Renee Cooprider. There's a strike. Line up and the pitch. On the ground, up the middle, played at third, throw to first in time. Two away. Milford one out away from improving to five and one. Molly Bennett at the plate. Inside, that'll back her off. Oh and one. Atherton to the set. Hit in the air in foul territory. And it's an 0 and two count.
Atherton one strike away from ending the game. That pitch up high. Upstairs, two and two. And there's a strike. Two and two. That is launched foul, but playable and out of the reach of the first baseman, Pierre Gustavo. And that will draw the walk. Lindsey Whittles will come up. Whittles one for two with a walk on the day. That one's outside. Wind up and the pitch up high. There's a strike. Down low. Three and one, Atherton have a little bit of trouble finding the plate here in this last inning. And this is up the middle, played at short, throw to first, and that will do it. A six to three ground out for the third out and the final out of the game as the Milford Scarlet Hawks take down the Hopkinton Hillers seven to one. Milford improves to five and one. Hopkinton falls to three and one. We'll have the final Stats coming up next. The Milford Scarlet Hawks defeat the Hopkinton Hillers by a seven to one final. Milford scored seven runs on 13 hits, committed no errors. Hopkinton scored one run on five hits, committing two errors in this game. And today was just a match of a tough, potent Milford lineup against uh, kind of a new pitcher to the starting role for the Hopkinton Hillers in Bream Rabley. She's had a great season so far, pitched three successful games, but met up with the most potent lineup that this Hopkinton Hillers team has seen throughout the season and had some struggles. Overall, she went four and a third, giving up five hits, two runs, walked one and had three strikeouts. Heather Holly came in in relief and as a sophomore and really her first experience uh, playing a team such as the Milford Scarlet Hawks, she struggled a little bit as well, but the Scarlet Hawks able to pull off the seven to one victory. Heather Holly gave up uh, four of the seven runs actually. Mirabli was responsible for a third run as when Holly came in in the fifth, she gave up an RBI single Two or a two RBI double, excuse me, to Taylor LeBrun, which drove in Emily Pierre Gustavo and Ali Pierre Gustavo. Emily Pierre Gustavo was still the responsibility of Bree Mirabli, but the Scarlet Hawks potent lineup comes through as they walk away 
with the 7-1 victory over the Hopkinton Hillers. Milford improves to 5-1. Hopkinton falls to 3-1. That is going to wrap up coverage of Hopkinton Hillers softball on H Camp. For Bob Hamilton on camera, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us for this coverage of Hopkinton Hillers softball.